Ethiopia for that 5,000 metres goal, but clearly he was on tired legs from a very, very fast 10,000 metres final in London. He said it was the toughest 10,000 he'd ever run. Certainly it was the quickest championship 10,000 he had ever run. One of the quickest championship 10,000s in history. Field of 14, pacemakers uh, Kibet and Bergen will take them out in 61s. Tin and the tall Australian there, only 22. Set personal best at 5,000 and 10,000 this year. He's had a wonderful year as Tiernan. Well, a faulty start just to uh, try and get Mo Farah's last ever UK-based track race underway. He will conclude his track career before he moves on to the roads. Half marathon and marathon beckons for him next year, maybe this autumn. But Zurich will be the close of his track career in a few days' time. Now, the first pacemaker should be Vincent Kibet. He's due to go out in 61 seconds per lap for the first three laps. And then Bethwell Bergen will take over and take them to five laps, two thirds of the distance, 2,000 meters in 505, 506. But how hungry is Mo Farah for this? It would appear not too hungry. He's uh, right at the back of the field, second from the back of the field at the moment. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, the pace, uh, it, it, you know, once they get underway, we're looking at around about, to what, 7.37 or something like that at, on 61 second laps. But Mo, right at the back, he'll want to do this with as little effort as possible, I would think. But you're quite right with that 10,000 metres in the World Championship. It took a lot out of him, and I think that uh, uh, contributed to his, uh, uh, by his own very high standards, his demise in the 5,000 metres. He fought so hard. But uh, third or fourth from the back of this race now. He, when you look at the biography of Mo Farah, well, you, all you have to say is he's done everything. Uh, because uh, as far as championships, Olympics, world championships are concerned, we're talking about multiple Olympic champion, multiple world champion, such as the legend that is established for British long distance running and world long distance running. It is the end of an era, there's no doubt about that. When Mo Farah hangs up his track spikes, Britain will be looking for their next middle or long distance heroes. They come down in front of us though now with six laps to run. It is Kibet from Bethwell Bergen. In a third place is Hassan Mead, who is 15th in the World Championship at 10,000 metres. He is a 337 man at 1,500 metres, has good speed. Well, Mo Farah has now moved up into seventh place as the pack bunches a little bit behind the pacemakers. They are moving at just outside the, the required tempo of 61 seconds per lap. The rain has started coming down, by the way. There's quite a constant drizzle now out there on the uh, infield. But Andy Butchard has moved up into fourth place, looking strong behind Hassan Mead, or just beside Hassan Mead in the white vest. Mo Farah there in, what, uh, seventh place at the moment, just ahead of McCall in the black socks. And these are nine are well away. The tempo, as I was saying, at around 7.40 tempo now, as they come into the straight, it's uh, Bergen from Kiplegat, and then me, Tiernan of Australia, Andy Butchart moves into fourth place. Mo Farah just shadowing his compatriot. McCall in turn in the green shorts is shadowing uh, Mo Farah. That's uh, Butchart in the green shorts in fourth place. Third now. And the uh, laps are not quick, it's slowed a little bit, it's yeah, cool, they're, it's yeah. wet. They're, I reckon they're going to run around about 7.40 at this uh, rate, Tim. I mean, uh, they're way off the original 61 second per lap schedule, which, uh, which is set. And that'll give one or two a chance, but Mo will now start moving and making his move. Well, Andy Butcher has made an aggressive move up into second place and looks like he's hungry for this. There's quite a surge going on up front. And it is Bergen who I think has got a nudge. Maybe Andy Butchart shouted something to him, but Mo Farah has recognised the danger and slotted into third place. Mekal in turn, the tall Moroccan, has moved around Kiplagat, Kiplangat in fourth place, into third now. So it's Butchart, Farah, Kiplangat, Mekal, bit of a gap back to Tiernan, and then Ringer, Richard Ringer of Germany, having a good run back in sixth place. Two laps to run. Well, it's a solid piece of running now. The four have broken away, and you're right, McCall is a danger. The Spaniard, uh, silver medalist over 5,000. He's got the strength endurance from 5,000 metres. He's also got a pretty quick finish on him as well, as he demonstrated in the uh, World Championships. He was fourth in the um, World Championship 1,500 metre final at 3.34, so he's got real pace too. And uh, we'll have to see 
how that goes. And Boucher, I'm sure they'll run past uh, Boucher in the end, but uh, I think you're right. McCall is a danger to Mo, but Mo has got that finish, we know. But how much tiredness is there in those legs? Boucher from Mo Farah. Kiplanga, the youngster, in third place. Only 19 years old. Went down his heat at the World Championships of the 5,000 metres for Kenya. It's Butchard with 500 metres to run from Mo Farah. The crowd loving this one. This Alexander Stadium crowd roaring on their hero. He won here last year in 7.32. The final lap now for Mo Farah as he reaches the bell. Now, Kiplanga in second place. Butchard third. Mikhail in fourth place. Could be a real threat here, Mikhail. Watch out for the Spaniard. I think I said he was a Moroccan. He's a Spanish 26-year-old. The European Championship silver medalist last year at 5,000. We know he's got good strength. And he moves on to the shoulder of Farina, who looks relaxed. Quite a contrast to the features of Mekal, the Spanish the Spaniard grimacing there. Keblangat on the inside, boxed, looks very relaxed. Could it be, he be a danger? 200 metres to run. Mo Farah still looking strong. Going through the gears, gauging this up again and again. He's had the measure of the opposition. He's outwitted them. He's outsmarted them. And he looks like he's outsmarted this field once more as Mekal in second place. Glances over his shoulder, looks legged here as Mo Farah surges down the home straight. The crowd rise to their feet in the home straight stand as he takes victory now, Mo Farah, for the final lap of around 57 seconds, 56.89. 7.38 the winning time for Mo Farah. Simple stuff for the multiple world and Olympic champion. And he sends this massive crowd who is Alexander Stadium home happy with uh, what was a fairly textbook win for him, whether it's top-level opposition or a moderate field like this, Mo Farah has again and again coped with them with consummate ease at world and Olympic level, at European Championship level too. And this man whose uh, legacy, well, we hope, will have inspired many, many youngsters into the sport of middle and long-distance running. Good hug there from, uh, of course, the man who's produced perhaps the performance of the meeting with that uh, high jump win in 2.40. But Mo Farah, or perhaps fittingly Stuart, after so many great races and uh, the British soil, British climate on the country, on the roads and on the track, finishing with just a little bit of rain to anoint him as uh, once again a fabulous victor.